begin to call the king of glory to come to our house to come to our place to come to our place of worship to come to our finances to touch everything that concerns us king of glory we welcome you this evening king of glory come and fill our hearts king of glory come and fill our situation king of glory touch our challenges oh lord in the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we call upon you tonight. We ask you, O oh Lord, to come and touch everything that needs to be touched, Father. We come ask you, O oh Lord, to come and heal everything that needs to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you, O oh Lord, to come and defend us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray that, Father in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the King of glory, oh Lord. We pray that you will come and with your power tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 144, I read from verse 1. It says, Blessed the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shields and the one whom I take refuge. He says he subdue my people under me. He says, Lord, what is man? What you take knowledge of him or the son of man that you are mindful of him he says verse 5 he says bow down your heavens oh lord and come down touch the mountains and they shake the smoke father we pray that tonight you will touch the mountains and you shake every most smokes in the mighty name of jesus christ he says 
as flash forth lightning and scatter them, O Lord. Scout out your arrows, Father, and destroy them. I want you to pray that, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will scatter every arrows, every arrows of sorrow targeted against me, every arrows of destruction targeted they tell me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we come against them tonight. Father, the Bible says you will scatter them and you will destroy them. Father, we pray that you will destroy every arrow of the destruction, every arrow of poverty, every arrow of progress that is not allowing me to move forward. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every arrow that has targeted my soul, every arrow that has targeted my success, Every arrow that's targeted my destiny. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, tonight we will cancel them, we destroy them, and we pray that God Almighty, you will scatter them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we scatter them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray. Whatever arrows that's been targeted against you, whatever arrow that's targeted against your finances, whatever arrow that's targeted against your against your health, I want you to pray tonight that God Almighty will scatter them and will destroy destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No arrow of the enemy will be able to touch you. No arrow of the enemy will be able to amount to anything around in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every arrows of the enemy, every arrows of evil ones that is targeted against your finances, against your family, against your children, against your loved one. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come against them tonight. We destroy them by the power of the Almighty. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every evil arrow that's targeting against you at your work, that's targeting against you at your job, that's making people look at you that you are nobody. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, such evil arrow, Father, tonight, they're hereby destroy, they're hereby destroy, they're hereby paralyzed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come against every arrow that's making us stagnated. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, stagnation in our homes, Father, we pray tonight they are hereby rebuked, they are hereby destroyed by the power of Most High God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, stretch out your hands, Father, from above, O Lord, and rescue us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want you to pray and say, Father, stretch out your hands, O Lord, and rescue me. Stretch out your hands, O Lord, and deliver me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, open your mouth and make a declaration. Father, you will deliver me from every evil arrow. You will rescue us, O Lord. As a church, you will rescue us, O Lord. As an individual, you will rescue us, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every arrow, Father, we come against them tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray that God Almighty, after you have delivered us, O Lord, after you have rescued us, O Father, we will sing a new song on to you. We will sing a new song to our God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because you are healer, you are protector, you are deliverer, you are comforter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We, re we reference your presence tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. We know you can do all things and we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. Father, that strength, that's what we are tapping tonight. We tap into that strength, oh Lord, tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will continue to strengthen us, oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We bless and we worship you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, 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 and amen, Jesus' name. It is well with you. Thank you, choir. We thank God for your lives. And God will continue to strengthen you and will uphold you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to church tonight. I just want to encourage us. And I know God Almighty will continue to keep us intact in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The devil will not come in between us in the name of Jesus Christ. I have a little small word that I want to share with us. It's in the book of Psalm 90 verse 1 briefly before I call on our pastor. If you are there, please read it. Psalm 90 verse 1. It's a very simple one. I want to read it from the book of King James Version. Psalm 
90 verse 1. And it says, okay. It says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Dwelling place. God, we recognize him being our dwelling place. It's our dwelling place in all generations. Some of us, we were in church. We grew up in church. We are in church. We are still in church. So we need to recognize him at all times. In the morning, everywhere we go, every second, every moment, that he and he's continued to be our dwelling place. In our every changing world, we have a permanent home in God. In life, it's everything here in life is temporary. But God is our eternal rock. He's the one that we depend on. When everything else passed away, but the word of God remains so sure. When we look to him, I want to encourage us to look at nobody. Don't look at people, but look at him. He says, if you look at him, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. I just want to encourage you tonight to let him be your hiding place. Make him your dwelling place. Make him the person that you run to at all times. When nobody, when people that you trusted, you trust so much, you believe so much, in when they were, when they are nowhere to be found god almighty will always be there for you in the mighty name of jesus christ father we thank you for the word of wisdom that has come forth tonight and i thank you oh lord that king of glory if our adventure we've missed it we've now been you know recognizing you as being you being our dwelling places father but tonight for you have opened our eyes, O oh Lord, to see something different, O oh Lord. I pray that King of Glory will continue to dwell, to be, to believe in you, to trust in you, to put our faith and our hope, even in you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Think of everlasting Father, because we know your presence will not elude us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray that your presence will always sustain us. Your presence will always be our refuge. In the name of Jesus Christ. Think of everlasting Father. We bless and we worship you. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Do I have anybody with a testimony briefly? A testimony? May God has done anything for you? Well, I have a testimony. There was something that was being in my heart and I wanted to do. I've been wanting to do it for a while. But today I just flipped. I went on Craigslist. I did it last night about 2 a.m. I text the individual and I just text the person and he responded. And this morning we got everything and he called me. You can come. And I thought the place would be too far from where I thought. By the time he called me, it was just two minutes away from where I was. I was so excited and I thought, okay, God, this can be, this, this is strange. I went to go meet this individual. By the time I got to their house and um, on my way, you know, being came in and I, I took some stuff with me, you know, and I dropped it off. At, he looked at me, he said, who are you? And I said, well, my name is Kimmy, and I came to see you. <laughs> He said, you don't even know me. You brought me all this. What I'm trying to say is, by the time I did that, he came, we, he came to help me even more than what I expected. I mean, he jumped up. He was doing things that I could not even accord past. I said, this can only be God. I, I, I mean, I didn't even ask him. He said, you know what? Don't even have to do this. Don't worry. I'll, I'll go with you. I'll go do this. And he said, do you still need this one? I said, yes. Do you need this one too? I said, yes. I said, I didn't come for that. He said, no, no, no. Don't have to worry about it. I'll give you more. He was just giving me more than I expected. And I just want to give glory to God. It was like a mountain to me. Honestly, I didn't know how, who and who's going to help me. The everything I wanted was done within a matter and a thinking of a high. And I didn't, it didn't cost me extra. Actually, God added more blessings to it. And I just want to give glory to God Almighty for what he had done today. He really surprised me. And I believe God 
Almighty, you continue to surprise me as I continue to hold on to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for who you are. In Jesus' mighty name, I give in thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God for, we give God thanks for that testimony. I will pray that um, in this month of I am more than a conqueror, you have greater testimonies of victories in the name of Jesus. Um, you know, uncommon victories that you would look back and say, wow, how did this happen? I thought it was a mountain, but God made it into a molehill. Lift up your voice and just speak to the Lord tonight that this month shall be a month of conquest for you, month of victory, month in which the impossible shall become possible. Month in which you be you do things that is unexplainable that will cause men and women to exclaim in the name of Jesus. Your name will be synonymous with exclamation. It this could only be God. How could this have happened? Wow, because you are more than a conqueror. Father Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that is connected via our live stream. Thank you for those that are in our house and for those that are on their way. And those that will even join this broadcast later. That, Lord, you will touch them even at this hour. We commit everyone into your mighty hands. That no one will go the same way they have come. Everyone with an expectation will not live disappointed in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are a turn around God, and I know that there's nothing too hard for you. And we believe, Lord, that tonight you will take us to that next level that we desire in the name of Jesus. Our eyes are on you. We look unto you. You said they were lightened and they were not ashamed. Lord, we will not be ashamed in the name of Jesus. We trust in you with our health. We trust in you with our accommodation. We trust in you concerning our finances. We trust in you concerning our relationship. We trust in you, Lord, even concerning our friends and family members. And we say, Lord, we will not be ashamed in the name of Jesus. He said, the young lagion do lack and suffer hunger, but they that trust in the Lord will not lack any good thing. Lord, tonight, our trust is on you. Our highs is on you. And we know that you are more than able to do exceedingly abundantly, even far Above what we can even ask or imagine, according to your power that works in us. Thank you, King of Glory. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you excited to be in God's presence tonight? It's a good thing. The psalmist says, I was glad. When they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, each time I come into his presence, it's a time to be strengthened. It's a time to be refilled. You know, when your battery is going down based on what has been happening in the course of the week, then when you come to service during the midweek service, that weakness is exchanged for strength because your battery is charged up again to take you across 
the week until you come back on Sunday to be recharged again. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Said they go from strength to strength. As many appearing before God in Zion. So that's why I know that you are not living here weak, defeated in the name of Jesus. You are not living here disappointed in the name of Jesus. You are not living here discouraged in the name of Jesus. But you are living with your shoulder head high. With a swing in your steps. Knowing fully well that you are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. So as we all know, our, the prophetic theme for this month is I am more than a conqueror. Can you somebody repeat that with me? Who are you? Who are you? Hallelujah. I like the way you said it so confidently. And that's why I would like to just share a quick word with us. Engaging the power of confidence for victorious living. Engaging the power of confidence for victorious living. Hallelujah. So who do you say you are? Say it with confidence. Say it as if you believe it. Say it because you know it. You know, if you don't know who you are, the enemy or people will tell you who you are not. Understanding of who you are is what positions you to be more than a conqueror. You know, Jesus at every opportunity was always declaring who he is. I and my father, we are one. I am not of this world. He said, God has anointed me to preach good tidings, to heal the sick, to open the eyes of the blind, to heal the brokenhearted. He was always declaring who he is. That is the strength of identity. What you declare, you are firm. And what you are firm, God delivers. Declaration is very important. And that, that is what leads to affirmation. If you are not confident enough to say it, you it cannot be affirmed in your life and you cannot become it. It is what you are confident enough to say that you are able to become. It says, declare ye and you will be justified. Declaring in confidence, knowing that God that has called you, is able to do all he has declared concerning your life. Hallelujah. It is what you say you are that God is able to make you. Many people have canceled themselves, canceled their destiny, destroyed their life because of what they've been saying. And that was the case with the children of Israel. God promised them the promised land. But 10 spies went to check out the land. And they said, we cannot enter. There are giants. We are just like grasshopper there. And God said, well, that's what you said. And for 40 years, they roamed in the wilderness. But two sets of people. Joshua and Caleb said, we can take the land. We know there are giants. We are not ignoring the opposition. 
But we know that we have a God that is more than any opposition. We know that we are more than conquerors. We will overcome this opposition. And, and true to it, they were the only two people that left Egypt that were able to make it into the promised land. I pray concerning you tonight, whatsoever wilderness journey you have been going through, I bring an hand to it now in the name of Jesus. Begin to step into the promises of God for your life. Begin to step into the reality of God's plan for your destiny. As you begin to declare with confidence that thing that God has whispered into your spirit. That word that you have received into your mind and you know that this is coming from God. As you begin to say it with confidence, I see God bringing it to pass in the name of Jesus. One thing I want you to know is this. God does not do for you what he wants. He does what you say. No wonder, no wonder in Numbers chapter 14, verse 14. Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. It says, as you have spoken into my ears. So will I do to you. Are you speaking defeat? Are you speaking failure? Are you speaking lack? Are you speaking breakdown? Or you are speaking progress? You are speaking I am more than able. You are speaking success. You are speaking favor. What you say is what God will do. God will not do whatever you have not spoken into his ears. Say unto them, as truly as I live, say it to the Lord. As you have spoken into my ears, so will I do to you. So what have you been speaking Have you been speaking in agreement with God? Is what God is saying. Have you been speaking in agreement with what you have heard? Have you been speaking with in agreement with the prophecy that has gone ahead of you? Have you stirred it up by what you speak? Or you have been canceling it by speaking negativity? By looking, allowing your circumstances and your situations to determine your situation. It is time you stop describing your situation and start declaring your expectation. It is time you, start, you stop describing the issues and start declaring what you desire. It's enough of pity party. It's not taking you anywhere. It's just inviting negativity. But when you speak the Lord, no matter I might be going through this, but God has said I am more than a conqueror. And I know no matter the challenges facing me this month, I will overcome you in the name of Jesus. Is it concerning my accommodation? Is it concerning my health? Is it concerning my finances? I know I am an overcomer. I am more than a conqueror. And before you know it, you set forth forces of God in battle on your behalf. And they begin to give you victory in the name of Jesus. One thing I want you to know is this. Confidence is the backbone of conquerors. Somebody say confidence. Everyone that conquers, conquers, conquers on the backbone of confidence. 
you can't be um, unstable, unsure, and you expect to win. God spoke to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 6. I know the challenges before you is so great. And your mentor, Moses, is gone. Now you are stepping into his shoes. And I know it could be very overwhelming. But be thou strong and courageous. Be of good courage. Hallelujah. Confidence. I would, I would define confidence as being persuaded that God is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do. That is confidence. God is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. Say, for this cause, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. I am confident. I know who I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. Against that day. Confidence is being fully persuaded of who you believe. Fully persuaded of the promises of God. That his promises are yea and amen. That he will not cancel his promises. The dreams that he has, he has put into your heart. That he has put seeds of greatness in your life. And that seed, no matter how it has long it has remained dormant, it can never die. It's just you putting it in the right atmosphere and that greatness will begin to manifest. The Bible says in Numbers 14, 23, 19, that God is not a man that he would lie. And it's never the son of man that he should repent. As he said it, will he not do it? Has he spoken it? And shall it not make it good? Your God is a God that will do everything to ensure that his words will not fall to the ground, but will accomplish everything he has said. Just like rain falls on the ground, so shall my words be. It will not go back to me here, but it will accomplish all that I've said. But you have to be confident in the word of God. You have to be fully persuaded that God does not just speak without performance. No wonder in Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 21, he said, Abraham was fully persuaded. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 4, verse 21, Abraham was fully persuaded that what God has promised, he was able to perform. God will never say a word that he does not intend to bring to pass in your life. And don't even imagine that your mistakes, your past has canceled the promises of God. No. He is still able to bring it to pass. You just need to fall in line with him, trust him, and be confident again. We know the story of Abraham. 
In the course of these promises, he made mistakes. He went out and do what he shouldn't do. But that did not cancel the promise. The promise was still alive. So people of God, what has God spoken to you? It appears long. It appears unattainable. People said, oh, just forget it. Your circumstances says it can never happen. But it is time for you to come to the re reality that God promises a yea and what? Amen. It does nothing can cast to it. If he has spoken it, he's able to bring it to pass. Somebody say, God is able. Your God is able. God. He says he will do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. Your God is able. Don't give up on him. Is there an area in your life you are about to give up? Is there an area in your life you are saying, oh, I'm, big, I'm too old. Let, let me just forget about it. Is there an area in your life you feel, well, this will never happen? Even though you knew in your spirit, this God spoke to you concerning it. I'm here tonight to encourage you. I'm here tonight to challenge you. Please don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on the promises of God for your life. See what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 to 36. It says cast not Away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Confidence is needed to convert the promises of God to rewards. The promises will remain as a promise until you Allow your confidence to transform it into rewards in your life. Cast not away, therefore, your promise, your, your confidence. See what the Bible says in 36. It said, For you have the need for patience, that after you have done the will of God, that you will receive the promise. So while you are waiting for that promise to come, you are waiting in confidence. You are walking in his will. You are walking in his purpose. You are not allowing the enemy to, to, to put things in your mind contrary to what God has spoken to you. So you, you have need for patience. There are some promises you need to be patient. It doesn't mean that it's been canceled. It doesn't mean that it's not coming. Delay does not mean that it has been denied. So what you are doing during the process is what would determine if it will come quickly or it will continue to be delayed. To lose confidence is to lose your rewards. Many times God says, he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And you've been seeking him. You've been serving him. But what is missing is that you lack confidence. And you say, oh, I've been doing this. I've been serving. I've been paying my tithe. I've been doing it. But nothing is changing around my life. But the question is, instead of murmuring, you should be praising. Instead of complaining, you should be praising. You should be giving God thanks. You should be doing the will of God. Those are the things. You should project your confidence in God. 
after you've done his will, the promises cannot be denied. And remember, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, and this is the will of God concerning you. That you should thank God for all things. In every situation, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will. God cannot deal with murmurers. God cannot deal with complainers. And that was one of the reasons why the children of Israel, after they started murmuring, complaining about the manna, about wanting to go back to Egypt, he said, okay, manna, that is it. It's not going to change. And you're going to be in that wilderness for 40 years. But your children will see the promised land. The truth is this. Without confidence, no promise of God can see the light of day. Without confidence, you cannot take delivery of the blessings of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 32, while the armies of Israel were fearful, running away, turning their back to Goliath. David came and he began to speak words. He began to speak words of confidence. He began to declare, I will, God would deliver your head into my hands. You know, sometimes you might even be scared on the inside, but don't begin to speak scary words. Don't show you, you may be having jelly lily, your leg may be about to buckle, but make sure that what you are saying, you are speaking the confidence that you don't even have. And before you know it, the tide will begin to turn in your favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David exhibited confidence. And one thing is confidence will always speak. Confidence will always speak. And when it speaks, it delivers. To be God confident is to be rest assured of the faithfulness of God. And the integrity of his word. The prevailing circumstances not withstanding. To be called confidence is what is to be rest assured of the promises of God. And the integrity of his words. The prevailing circumstances notwithstanding. The situations may not look like it, but you trust God that God's integrity is at stake and God cannot deny himself. People of God, it works. It works. I have experienced it many times. If only you have confidence in God in what you have figured out, then that confidence is, is not complete. But you've not figured it out, but God has said it. That's all you need to know. God's integrity. You put, when God sees your confidence in him, 
you put his integrity at stake. And God will never deny himself. God is an unchanging God. He doesn't, he's the same today and forever. In Titus chapter 1, verse 2, Bible says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, God cannot lie. Promise before the world began. God cannot lie. Somebody say God cannot lie. Concerning my situation, God cannot lie. Concerning my life, God can. Concerning the situations I am facing right now, my God cannot lie. And being God confidence, like we said on Sunday, is what will destroy the spirit of fear in your life. When you know that God cannot lie, no matter what the devil is trying to play, no matter pranks, no matter what he's trying to show, whatever you're good, my God cannot lie. I am going to be rest assured in, on, in his promises. And before you know it, God will come to your rescue. You know, you, we saw the encounter in Second Kings, chapter six, verse fourteen to sixteen, when a host of army came against the servant of God and Elijah. And when he woke up in the morning, he saw that the whole city has been surrounded by a army. And he said, oh, alas, my master, how shall we do? And the master answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And that is the mentality you must carry. No matter the, what is going to, with you, one with God is a majority. You just need to be assured of his presence. You, need, you just need to be assured of his presence. And one thing is God will not leave you nor forsake you. He said in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 to 2 that when you are going through the fire, he will be there with you. Sometimes God allows you to go through fire. He allows you to go through that situation. And for several reasons. It could be testing your faithfulness. It could be to, 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 to make you stronger. It could be because he, 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 he knew that if you don't go through that, you cannot be the best person you need to be. When you go through, I will be with thee. When you go through the livers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, it will not burn you. So, it means that there will be situations where we have to go through things. The three Hebrew teenagers... God could have stopped them being thrown into the fiery furnace. But he did not stop it. So we, we go through things. But our, and see the way they spoke. We are not going to bow. And if you throw us in there, that's okay. We know our God will be there. And even if he's not there, we're still not going to bow. That is the peak of confidence. 
And at that point, God is not saying, okay, no, let me stop them from throwing them into the fire. No. They, st- it was, they were still thrown there. But you know, the funny thing was, God was waiting for them in the fire. Sometimes it is for a greater witnessing. Because what happened thereafter, the king said, wow, was it not three people that were thrown in? Now I see the fourth person like the son of God. And he said, from that day on, we will serve the God of Shadrach, Menash, and Abednego. And those people that connived against them, he said, they should be thrown into that fire if your own God will be able to save you. The same thing happened with Daniel when he was thrown into the lion's den. God is a God that can shut the mouth of lions. He can can stop the jaws of lions from biting and from, from hurting you. The lion might be there. It may be like a very terrible situation, but your God is able. He's able to do exceedingly beyond what you can think, beyond what you can imagine. Hallelujah. In Psalm 91, verse 10 and 11, it says there's no evil. No evil shall befall thee. Neither shall any pig come near your dwelling. For he has given his angels charge over thee to keep you in all thy ways. Psalm 34 verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him and delivers them. You must be comf- you must allow your trust and confidence in God to rise. Be God conscious and be God confident. Don't allow your situations to cost you to li- to forget who you are. Sometimes, when we go through, we are quick to forget. And that is the only way the enemy can triumph. He wants you to forget. He wants you to start fear. He wants to stir up fear. But now that you know, now that you know, I know, the last time the enemy have the upper hand against your life shall truly be the last in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. The psalmist said in Psalm 27, 1 to 3, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to hit my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host encamped around me, my heart shall not fear. Though war will rise up against me, in this will I be confident. Engaging the power of confidence for victorious living. I'd like you to rise up on your feet and just speak to the Lord right now. Psalm 46, verse 1 to 5 says, The Lord is my refuge and my strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we'll, we'll not fear, though the heart be removed. And though the mountains be carried forth in the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roars and be troubled, though the mountain shake 
with the swellings thereof. There is a river. The streams we are from shall make this glad, make glad the city of God. An holy place of tabernacle of the most high. God is in the midst of her. Hallelujah. She shall be safe. She shall. God shall. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And God will help her right early. Just speak to the Lord tonight. Begin to declare your confidence. Remember, living faith is speaking faith. When faith appears, fear disappears. Nobody is fear free. I want to say this again. Nobody is fear free. But not everybody is fearful. Not everybody is fearful. Every word have fear. But not all are fearful. Open your mouth and begin to declare. Declare your confidence in that area. What has God said concerning you? What are the promises that the enemy is trying to cancel? Begin to declare those promises. Begin to declare your confidence. Begin to declare your victory. Begin to declare your, your, your persuasion. That God is able to carry you to. You might be going through fire. You might be going to the river. You might be going through storms. But God is there in with you. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And will say of our God, The Lord is their strength. And is a present help in the time of trouble. You know, when that storm arose in Mark chapter 4, verse 37 to 40, they were all afraid. Don't you care that we'll perish? Well, Jesus, look at them. Where is your confidence? Where is your confidence? And he said, peace be still. People of God, whatever storm right now, I de declare as a servant of God, peace be still. Let your eyes be stayed on God. Maybe you have an evaluation that is coming up and there's a fear that wants to be stirred up. Maybe you have an interview. But God is saying, peace be still. Let your confidence be in me. I am God. I will do what I have said. I'm not going to cancel my promises. I have not brought you this far to leave you. The season of weeping is giving way to your seasons of joy. Joy is coming. Peace is coming. Restoration is coming. Trust me. When things are not easy. Trust me when things are tough. Trust me when things are hard. Don't let your confidence be shaken. I am God. There is nothing too hard for me. Speak to your father. De declare your victory. Declare your conquest. Declare that you are, you, are, you, are, you are winning and winning and winning. No more defeat. No more failure. No more lack. That sickness, God is more, is greater than you. God is greater than that report. God is greater than any forces that is set up against you. They that are with you are more than they that are against you. Why don't you just speak to God right now?
Thank you, everlasting Father. In the midst of the storm, Jesus was sleeping. From today, you have such rest in the name of Jesus. Anytime you see Satan rise, you shall arise. When the storm rise, you shall arise. And I know that when you arise, every storm will begin to cease in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Put your hands together and you may please be seated in Jesus' name. Yeah. Put your hands together and celebrate our pastor. Hallelujah. It says something, even while I was praying, I had to go back to my book and I, I wrote it down. And it says, nobody is fear free. But not everybody is fearful. Did you, anybody catch that? Or was it just me? I, I, I opened my eyes real quick. I, I grabbed my book and I, I was trying to write. I was looking for a pen. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. That was very good nugget. Thank you. It says, nobody is fear free. So that means fear is something that it's, it happens to pretty much all of us. You know, some people cannot even stand it. Little small darkness, you know. If you turn the light on right now, some people will be freaking out. If PG and E turn the thing off, everybody will be like, oh, I don't know. Even come on, even today, we're worrying about what did, what did this, um, they said it was something about an auntie ran away. <laughs> They were talking about little mice. And the, and the guy that was helping back there, he said, you bigger than a mice. He said, oh, I don't want to deal with it. So, but she, she was, she, she, I mean, she got scared. And then, I, I mean, those, those are the things that we are so, you know, there's some things that comes around us we don't have control over. So nobody is fear free. So it, you're bound to be, you know, to, to be scared, right? Or, you know, that kind of a thing. But you know what? He said, not... Everyone is faithful. Hallelujah. And God will help us to remain faithful and be with him and knowing that he is God at all times, that he will never leave us in the name of Jesus Christ. There's something else he, he, he said and I wrote down. He said, being God's confidence will destroy the spirit of fear. So once we have the confidence in God, once we know who he is, once we know who we are in Christ Jesus, and guess what? He destroys every spirit of fear. You know, we don't know what tomorrow might be. We have no idea what's going to happen. A moment from now, we don't know. But one thing we know, we should have and believe and put our trust and our confidence in God. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. That's another thing I wrote down. I always write things down when he's speaking. <laughs> He said, stop describing your issues and starting declaring your expectation. So sometimes we get so caught up in talking about what we go through, what is going on, where the problems are, how we can't, how we should, you know, why is it now? We start questioning God. We start describing, expanding the whole issue, trying to make this problem bigger than what it ought to be. Instead of paying too much attention to such, he said we should do what? Declare your expectation. Though they said I am broke, but guess what? I am more than a conqueror and God will enlarge my coast. He will enrich my pocket. Those are your declaration. Though my parents might not be rich, but guess what? I know I have been set aside above all principalities and power because the wealth of gentiles has I be released unto me. I am going to be the head, not the tail. Those are the declarations. It might not look at it, but though, Continue to speak it. And the more you speak it, the more God will 
back you up and bring everything to perfection in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the word of your word that's gone forth tonight. We thank you for the nuggets that you gave us. And I pray that these little tiny words, oh Lord, will come together and will continue to encourage us in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that God will give us confidence, oh Lord, in you to be able to tackle. And when these problems arise, that we will arise in you, knowing that you are with us at all times. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we cancel every spirit of fear that is surrounding us, that's not allowing us to see the bigger picture in the name of Jesus Christ. From this day ends forward, Father, we pray that God Almighty, you continue to, 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 to be with us, O oh Lord. You continue to speak to us, O oh Lord. You continue to anoint our tongue like that of a writing writer. You will help us, O oh Lord, to speak the right word that will change our situation that will change our lives and will turn our lives around in the name of Jesus Christ. Think of our lasting Father. We bless and we worship you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Let's package an offering unto God before we go. If you have something you want to give to God, you God has been with you, he has done great things and you are sowing a seed of faithfulness a seed of conquerors open your pockets and let's put things put it together and serve god with our tithe and offerings and god will help us in the name of jesus christ for those of us at online it on i don't have my glasses covenant faith paypal me you can Put it on 559205. Can you help me? What's the last one? 205. God bless you. Hallelujah. If this, let's do that. Father, we thank you for the offerings that you have given unto us. Out of the abundance you have blessed us with. We've come, O oh Lord, with this token. And for some of us, I don't have nothing to give, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that King of glory will enrich your pocket, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke the devourer for our sake in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, give us a reason to testify in the name of Jesus Christ. The one that's looking for a job, Father, I pray that you open doors of opportunity, doors of a new job, doors of a new opportunity of blessings, O oh Lord. Favor upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Everywhere they've been rejected. Father, because of their willingness tonight, you will they will come and they will celebrate with them in the name of Jesus Christ. The ones that have a job. Job, Father, I pray that they will not lose their job. Their supervisor will love them and they will encourage you. They, they will be encouraged and they will receive bonuses in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, King of Glory, because we know you are God of abundance and you begin to release your abundance even unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Are we ready to go home? We did something today. We, we, we tried to clean up the sanctuary. So please, as much as possible, if you find any bottles anywhere else, I mean, around you, so try to help us pick it up and just, you know, trash it. And God will help us as you do so in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's rest up as we get ready to go home. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are covenant family. We are one. 
Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen. Peace, shalom. See you on Friday and Saturday and Sunday in Jesus' name. Amen.